I've been kind of stuck in this house, taking care of my uh, 94 year old aunt. Her health just kind of been getting worse and worse over time. I guess I just feel some sort of deep responsibility for them. And, How often does she you know, get like, diarrhea that you have to clean? Well, she doesn't get diarrhea. It's more like she goes to the bathroom and there's a, how can I say, there's a little presence left behind. Hello? Hey, what's up? Is this Lyle? Yeah, who's this? Oh, this is Matt. What's up, Matt? How's Holy life? Holy shit. Well, life's been pretty terrible, in all honesty. Let's fucking get into it, baby. <laughs> um, well, I guess since, since, like, COVID hit, I've been kind of stuck in this house taking care of my, uh, 94-year-old aunt. Well, yeah. And her, uh, her health just kind of been getting worse and worse over time, you know. Doesn't forget who I am or anything, but, you know, she's kind of in la-la land. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I just gotta, like, I take care of everything. I make her food, and I have to clean up after her, and that sort of thing. And it's just been uh, very stressful. And, How often does she you know, get like, diarrhea that you have to clean? Well, she doesn't get diarrhea. It's more like she goes to the bathroom, and there's a... How can I say there's a little presence left behind? Sometimes she doesn't make it to the toilet fully. So, like, but, you're picking up logs that, like, yeah. you're picking up, uh, um, by logs, by logs. Is that, like, log, uh, side logs? Side, occur, side logs, yeah. Yeah, that occur on the, on the way from the chair that she sits in all day to the no. bathroom. Okay, what else? Um... You know, and it's just, it's just kind of sad watching her decline. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, I, our family has talked about putting her in a home, but she's the type of person she's always been, um, she's always been like a homebody alone. She'd always, whenever we go out or like go have dinner with her or something, she always want to get home right away. Not very sociable person, never was married, you know, that sort of thing. So I feel like if we put her in, a convalescent home or something, she would be gone within the month. And it just kind of sucks. What, what old, can I do, you know? How old are you? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be turning 26 on December 3rd. Cool, man. Uh, what What's your life like? In all honesty, I don't really do much other than, you know, I keep an ear out for her and then I just sort of sit around. I... I I do play music. That is something I do as like a hobby, but, um, mm. do uh, you, so, I mean, did you just, was that you farting or was that your aunt? No, no, <laughs> no, that was, I'm um, sorry. I, I didn't expect to get a call so soon. <laughs> a little, do, little do anxious. Do you fart when you get anxious? <laughs> no, that was my, that was my lip, dude. Um, you know? Oh, you said that was your lip? There. Yeah. Okay. That's a cute tick. You do little raspberries when you get nervous. That's fun. Um, <laughs> I'm a little right. high, yeah. too. This is a little yeah. surreal. Yeah, it's been a weird you night. deserve it. You deserve it. You're, you're out here picking up side logs, all right? You deserve to get high and fart all over the place. Now, um, all right. So you've been doing this for three years, you said, since, like, the pandemic? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, her health wasn't as bad at the very beginning, but she had mm -hmm. like a bad fall and broke her wrist, and it's just been downhill from there. And you, do everything for it. and this has been making you severely depressed for the past three years. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I have a bunch of questions about this. Are you the who? Where is everyone else? Where's Where's your mom? Where's her, uh, like, well, why my, are you? Why is it you who's doing this? Where's everyone? Well, else? it's my my dad's aunt. I mean, he he lives very close by, and you know he he comes by every once in a while. But there's really my family is very small. I I have two uncles. They don't live in the same state. One of them lives in a different country. You know, all all her direct family is basically gone. So it's really just me. And I have a brother, but he's in he's doing school right now. So. Hmm. So I I I guess. What? How old's your brother? Um, he's eighteen. 
He's 18. And then your yeah. what's your tell me again what your your dad lives close, but why is he not helping you with this? Oh, he, I mean, he he does help out. I mean, he's just not he's not here every day. Okay, I guess I just it feels a little. And I don't know, man. I don't want to speak out of turn here because I know it's a, uh, these kinds of issues are complicated. But it feels unfair to me that you're the only one that's sacrificing your life to, you know, help out. Yeah, I, I, I've been, I hear that from other people too. Um. Well, tell me about this. Let's say that um, sh- you didn't you didn't feel this this deep responsibility to do this. What would you be doing with your life instead? See, that, that's the problem. I don't I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you must have an inkling of an idea of a, some, any sort of, you, it could even be vague. It can, you can be like, I want to. Well, I, I did go to school to try to, to, to like to um, do audio engineering stuff, but I've, I've always kind of struggled with anxiety and I sort of had a, a nervous breakdown at one point and that was the end of that. That was what? What caused what caused that nerve? Wait, how old you said you were sixteen? No, no, no. In twenty sixteen, that happened. Oh, okay. What caused your nervous breakdown? I don't know. I, I just, I don't really want to get too dark, but I was just kind of like I had been seeing somebody on on campus, right? Like a like a therapist. Yeah. And they prescribed me on I need a presence because I wasn't really doing too great mentally. I, I don't know. I guess I just wasn't adjusting to the, the normal every day of my life at that point. I, I don't know what was going on. I, I was smoking a lot of weed. That probably didn't help. Um, are you st- you mentioned but, you were, are you still smoking a lot of weed? Yeah. Like I I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was mm-hmm. very young, and mm-hmm. when I got to college. I, I didn't want to take my meds anymore because they made me feel like a zombie. Like I couldn't <laughs> talk to people. Yeah. It was very hard. Yeah. And you no, know, I don't like to drink. And I guess I got attached to smoking bud. Kind of not the greatest thing, but it's I guess I self medicate with it in a way. Um, it's funny. I'm also turning 26 in December. A big fucking pothead was diagnosed with ADHD as a little kid, but didn't want to take my medication because uh made me feel like a fucking zombie. Um, hmm. So you really have no idea. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you have like, you have no idea at all of anything. It's, did you graduate? No, I, I dropped that after uh, one semester, like a semester mm-hmm. and a half. And then um, since then, I, I tried therapy, and I had a couple jobs, and I met my girlfriend, and and then the pandemic hit, and it just kind of, I've been stuck here. You have a girlfriend? Well, not anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, but what did, how long ago was, was that not a thing? Well, it's sort of been an ongoing issue. She, um... She moved out in like August. We were just kind of, I mean, me dealing with my own issues and her having her own problems, I guess. We just sort of a clash and then, you know, doing just chores around the house. Like we'd fight over doing the dishes, you know, that sort of thing. We had a dishwasher here and it stopped working. You know, like who, who would, who would like carry their share and I, uh, Stuff like that, and it would escalate. It really wasn't healthy. Like, I don't blame her for leaving, but I guess I just can't get over the fact, like, this is just, I'm in a really rough spot, and I just kind of felt a little, like, she pushed me away by going through with that, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, do you have a job? Do you make money? No, not currently. Okay. Did you have you had like since you left college? Have you had a job, or has it all has your yeah? I had I had two two cashiering jobs. Mm-hmm. Worked at a grocery store, and then I worked at a a big lot. Do you have any pipe dreams? Do I have any? I mean, I like I'd like for people to listen to my music, but I don't. 
like it's so I I wish I could have the attention span to just sit down and work on something, but it's just a, a struggle. Like I, I'll have like little bursts of ideas and I never follow through on them. Mm. Mm. Do your friends? Do you see people outside of your aunt? Not really. <laughs> Can I ask what state you I live have, in? I had plenty of friends in, in college, but they all kind of ghosted me uh -huh. after I left. Hmm. Can I ask what state you live in? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I'm curious. Connecticut. Connecticut, all right. Um, do you live near a major city at all? Um, I guess closest would be New York. Hmm. What's your relationship like with your aunt? Um, well, I I loved my grandmother, who was her, her sister. <clears throat> and, and they were, like, is, inseparable. And, she, uh, like, the both of them, my, my parents were always working when I was growing up. So, like, they both of them kind of would watch me. So, I guess I just feel some sort of deep responsibility to them because in all honesty I don't really think my uncles care that much like my my dad does care but he well I should I should mention my father he, he um he's been going through uh his second bout of cancer on mm -hmm. top of everything so that that's really why he hasn't been around here that much mm -hmm. he's been busy mm -hmm. with that which is obviously understandable mm -hmm. um but I don't really have a big family. They're all I've got, and once they're gone, I mean, yeah, that's it. You know, man, this is t I. You know, I feel like I've talked to some people on the podcast uh, recently who like had this issue of like taking care of somebody versus like living their own lives, and um, I I don't know. I feel like it's a personal decision. But I will say, you know, it's a personal decision, I think, about, like, you know, do you prioritize yourself or is this responsibility that you feel to your family, um, you know, more important than you not hating your life? If you asked me personally, and I'm not, you know, the arbiter of, uh everyone's personal choices or anything like that but i i do think at a certain point and i don't know how, how this manifests in your actions or anything like that but i do think at a certain point uh especially you know with how young you are like it because it, 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 it's a detriment to, to continue to neglect your own life to take care of other people that feels in my gut that feels unhealthy to me you know if you're just constantly no, i mean obviously it is because i'm i'm really not doing great <laughs> yeah yeah and i don't uh... think you and look man I, I, by the way i want you to know i think it's very noble what you're doing um oh, I, I and you seem that. like a good guy so it it is a bummer that you're like not giving yourself the chance to develop your own life, you know? Yeah. Um, and also, I and you know, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Um, well, he's, like, he's doing a lot better, but that was that was all kind of culminating while of my girlfriend was still living here. Yeah, you know, since, since this was like more towards the beginning of the year and since then he's been doing a lot better thankfully mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. it's just been a very hard year <laughs> mm -hmm. um can, can how about i mean how about this if 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 we were to because you know if, look i'm gonna we're gonna end this phone call and uh you know i i hope that yeah, I hope I hope it was of some benefit to talk about this. On hey, talk, this talking about day. it helps. 
Um, is there like what? Is there one thing? How however fucking small. Is there one thing, or however big, that you can do just for yourself, you know, like, now? Like, do, is, do you have any idea of what that could be, if you were just doing one thing for yourself? I mean... Uh... Yeah, I, don't, I really don't know what that would entail. I guess it would be nice to have, like, a vacation, but... It's just not something that's feasible currently. Um, in all honesty, I don't know. I I can't tell you to push your aunt down a flight of stairs and go to Mexico. <laughs> um, but I do think that what I'll land. I'll land on this because this is a it's a complicated issue and it's about is a real personal choice. I'll land on this. I hope. Okay, I'll land on this. I hope that every day when you make this choice, that you're going to take on this responsibility to help your aunt at 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 the expense of, you know other things that you could be doing with your life as a as a as a cool young guy. I hope you are making that decision intentionally. And as part of making that decision intentionally, you feel good about the decision instead of making the decision and then hating life every day because that's the opposite of having your cake and eating it too is making an intentional decision about your life and then just hating it every day as if you're not in some modicum of control. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get I get what you're saying. I, I mean, nobody's forcing me to do this. It's, it's like I said, I, I really don't feel like I could um, live with myself if we put her in a home or something and then she's dead within a month. Because... I'm pretty sure that's how her mother went. Too. Is she really, hold up. Uh, wait, she's 94, you said? Mm -hmm. She's my great aunt, not my aunt. I want to be specific. Buddy, <laughs> I don't want to tell you what to do, man, but like... <laughs> 94 is a pretty fucking good run, dude. I, yeah, I know. 94 I'm, is a good run. He's a very stubborn one, I, I'll tell you 94 what. is a good... What's your name? Matt. Matt, 94 is a good run. If you put her in a home and she dies, she had a good run, brother. And by the way, it's not like, by the way, the whole, by the way, putting her in a, I, I don't, where, where are you getting this? Where are you getting this from that put, that she will die if you put her in a home? In, because in all honesty, I, I feel like she, in a she's home, very attached to her house. She's incredible. She's always been a home buddy. She's been incredibly attached to this house her whole life. Well, then you, well, then you know what, like dude? Taking her out of well, her then, environment would just, just then why ruin doesn't she? <laughs> then why doesn't she pay for somebody to, dude? Why doesn't she pay for somebody to help her we've, out? We've tried. We've tried to get people to come in and like through her health insurance, and they will only come for like a few weeks, and then that's it. We've tried. We've tried and tried. We're not loaded here, unfortunately. I, I wish we were. But if she got put in the home, the house would probably have to get put towards that. Like, that's a little dire here. Yeah, but man, but, at a certain, but like, I, I, I don't, I, I feel bad going on and on about this because I don't, but like, at, <laughs> kind, kind of at a, look, dude, at a certain point, like, look, here's the thing. I want to make sure that when I'm 95 years old, like, you, you have she has a little bit of personal responsibility we, we all know we're gonna get old and we have a little bit of personal responsibility to make sure that when we're old and sick um you know we're not making everybody else's you know lives miserable around us to take care of us and and like you know if I gotta get put in a home be and and that's what I did instead of making my great grandson miss his life and be fucking miserable then um you know, at 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 a certain at a certain point, I think she's got to be a little bit responsible for this instead of like bringing your ass down too. 
you know. And and I I, I I'm I'm sorry. I don't know if it's my place to say those things or, or but like that's just how I feel as an outsider looking at this situation. I I mean I get what you're saying. She's just like she's kind of in la la land. Like I don't even know if she realizes so. It's, it is a, it's just very difficult. Um what's your name again? Matt. Matt. Um well Matt, uh thanks for talking about all this stuff. I I hope um just man, I hope yeah, you think I appreciate about it. you calling me, dude. I, I've been uh you listening to your podcast has been helping me stay sane, so Cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that, man. I just um uh, if you leave this conversation with anything, I hope it's that you are making an. Int- I just, I just hope it's that you're making this intentional decision every day, um, instead of like letting all of this shit happen to you passively, because that's not, because that that would just to me feel like a waste. Because you're, you know, you're a cool young guy, all right. So I'm glad you, know. you think so. <laughs> uh, thanks for calling, Matt. Have a good one. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Fuck, dude. I don't know. This stuff is hard for me because, I, like, <laughs> I really do. I really don't want to tell. I like. I mean, I do it a lot. I'm sure. I do it a lot, but I really don't. <sighs> Again, it's a personal decision whether you want to sacrifice your life for somebody who you feel like you owe some kind of debt to. If that's your prerogative, then sure. But like, but I don't know, dude. If at a certain, you know. The 60-year-old version of this woman would hopefully come up with some kind of plan or, or, or like, you know, for her to be put in a home, it's like, oh no, she has to make some kind of concession so that her great-grandson isn't, um, you know, wasting his, his youth and feeling depressed and horrible every day to take care of her. I just don't... uh... I don't know. I'm a gecko on the computer. What do I fucking know about anything? Hello? Hello. Who is this? My name's Sabina. Venus? Uh, Sabina. Sabina. What's up, Sabina? Yeah. How's life? Um, pretty good today, I would say. Where are you calling from? We finally had snow. Oh, I'm calling from Denmark. Oh, cool. What part of Denmark? Uh, Copenhagen. Oh, cool, man. Copenhagen's just, I mean, it's one of my favorite cities in the world, man. It's very, uh, it's alive. Everyone's riding bikes. Yeah. Everyone's eating Oh, cake. yeah, the bikes. You know what's fucked up is, um, like, Americans are known for being obese and, and gross. But, uh, I <laughs> went over, every time I go over to, like, Europe, it's like everyone's only drinking coke and beer and cakes like they eat way worse over there but for some reason they're they're not fat yeah 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 i think so we eat a lot of uh how do you put it crap (laughs) on a daily basis over here sweden is worse though um yeah sweden uh the 7-eleven i went to a 7-eleven it's in sweden and they had like a spaghetti station there, and yes. I was like, uh, "Yeah, th- that you, you know, what I'm talking about." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you tried the fast mash? Fast mash? What's a fast mash? It's like a coffee machine. They have it like tank stations, but it dispenses like mashed potatoes. So you're telling me that you guys have a, a mashed potato dispenser at your Seven Elevens, and we are the fat folks. Well, Sweden has that. It's not in Copenhagen, sadly, yet. Um, all right, I'm going to have to try that. I'm going to have to try that. It's annoying. I, I just – every single one of these podcasts is just going to be me ranting about fast food, which I guess is fine. But um, it's such a bu- – I'm That's sure cool. I've talked about this before. It's such a bummer that all, every, like, classically American fast food brand – Sucks in America and is better abroad. Like, 7-Eleven is disgusting here in America. But if you go to a 7-Eleven in Sweden, there's, like, you know, pe- <laughs> yeah, people yeah. working there don't, I, don't I, seem I, like they want to kill themselves. Yeah, I, 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 could, I really could imagine. I've tried a few, like, uh, 
classic American stuff like the, the Fruit Loops and Twinkies and the, all that. And you you always hear about how it's the greatest and they grew up with it and it's nostalgic and it just kind of tastes the same and extremely sweet. So I I, I could imagine your Seven Lemons being very greasy. Well, Sabina, I feel like you didn't call in to talk about 7-Eleven. So um, is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about today? Well, I think it was mostly the need to just talk, you know. I've had a rough couple of years. Um, and um, I know that some people call in and they talk about Nothing, and sometimes they talk about important stuff, but I think I just want to talk to someone, you know? I don't have a, have a good relationship with a lot of people, but, you know, sometimes it's just tough being the, uh, the friend that always has the bad news, you know? The friend that um, always has the bad news? Yeah, you know, every time you see someone and they just never have anything good to say, Right, and I'm sure. extremely scared of becoming that friend. Right, yeah. So sure. it for me it's become like I just don't talk about it mm. to anyone. Well, why have you had a rough couple of years? Well, the first one is going to be a little hard to explain, but you've probably heard about the fact that in Denmark you get paid to go to school. Yeah, yeah, I have heard about that. Yeah, and um, it, it, it's kind of just like getting paid for your job. It's so integrated into our society that we can't function if we don't have that. It's ex- expected that we live our lives with the pay we get from school. Um, but uh, I took a three-year education, and um, one day they just all decided that... Um, that somehow I went to the wrong school or something, and uh, and they wanted me to pay it all back. And it you went was, to a uh, school. A that, oh wait, so you went to a school that um, then Mark is like, oh wait, we actually don't cover this school, so you have to give us that money back. Yeah, they decided that all of a sudden, despite them like approving of it. Are they allowed to do that? Well, I guess if you're a government of a country, you can kind of do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, but um, I had lawyers on it and everything. We it, it wasn't just me; it was all the students that went to my class. Oh. And um, I, we had a lawyer look into it, and unfortunately, that particular place is protected by one paragraph that says that the student is responsible to figure out if the state is right in their approval. So you did like a class action lawsuit. We tried, but unfortunately, due to the fact that it was already a part of the their rules and you know and terms, then there wasn't really much we could do. We just got screwed. So, uh, how many around? How many? So a, a bunch of, a bunch of people who went to the school got fucked. How many people got fucked? Well, at first we thought it was twenty four, but it turned out that it was also uh, students from earlier years, so around two hundred. And it was also people that went there from like almost ten years ago. I think we figured out that got hit by uh, by well, what is it called? They had to pay back for a school they went to ten Damn. years ago. Damn! So you're just going along, living your life, and all of a sudden, the Danish government hits you with a bill for for your school that you went to ten years ago. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened to them. So I, I'm I'm curious. Do you know personally anybody else who is in this group of 200 people? And um, if so, like, do do you know what they're doing? What their plan is to kind of deal with all this stuff? Um, some of them. Um, many of them dropped out. Uh, this happened uh, for our class uh, before we were even done with school, um, and many of them dropped out, so I lost contact with them automatically. Um, but I had one really close uh, friend who, she also took a loan on the side, you can do that, really cheap payback as well, if, well, if the state doesn't get me that. But 
It was almost half a million Danish crowns she had to pay back. Fucking Jesus. Um, yeah. What did you um, go to school for? Uh, fashion design. Okay. Um, do you, do you, were you able to get some kind of a job? Um, kind of. I'm a freelancer, and I'm doing pretty okay. Oh, it's, hell yeah. uh, the fashion market is the fashion market isn't really the biggest and broadest uh, in in Europe uh, or Denmark specifically. So mm -hmm. I already knew that I couldn't work for like a company, and I had to go freelancing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a hat maker in Sweden at the moment. You're doing what in Sweden? I'm a hat uh, a hat maker. You make hats in Sweden. Yeah. That's cool. I like any kind of job that was, um, you know, they were doing in the 1700s. And I feel like a Swedish hat maker. It's cool that in the year of 2020, almost 2024, there are still Swedish hat makers. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's huge. Whenever a, a Swedish student gets a PhD, they have to get the doctor's hat. And that's the kind of hats I do. So I have uh, work every six months when they graduate. Ah, that's smart. Hmm. So, um, how much debt are you in from from Danish fuckery? Well, I was one hundred and seventy five thousand Danish crowns. Um, I don't know how much that is. Can I can I look it up real quick? Yeah, let's find that out. Let's see. Uh, Danish crowns to USD. Okay, 175, one, two, three. Uh, it's about $25,000. Yeah. Okay. Not, you know, when it comes to, like, student debt, I feel like that's not horrible. Oh, no, not at all, compared to, like, uh, what you get in America, uh, from what I hear. I mean, oh, my good dude, some people in America are, like, you know, high six figures. In student debt, but uh, but I mean, but it's I mean it's, it is it does it is made a little bit worse by the fact that you didn't you know because at least the people who go like six figures into debt like they knew they were gonna take it on, whereas you yes. didn't know you were gonna even take that debt on. You just got fucked by by Denmark. The, this is the uh, the equivalent of uh, having done a job for three years and then suddenly your boss comes back and say. Um, you didn't do your job probably, therefore you have to pay off your entire payment. You have to get it back again. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, um, it, it, it took all my savings, um, so mm -hmm. I'm out of it, luckily, but I don't have any money now. <laughs> Are you able to make um, decent enough money making hats? Mm, yeah, it's it's okay. Um I'm probably going to go back to school to get some uh, quote-unquote real education at some point um, because I can't do it full-time, sadly. And it's good pay, but it's not, you know, enough. Denmark is a very expensive city to live in and even more now than ever. I don't know what could possibly be realer than being a Swedish hat maker. <laughs> Thank you. What uh, oh, man, well, when you say when you say a real education, what does that mean? Um, you know, I've, I've kind of come to the realization that I need to have a job, uh, if, well, another job on the side to make it by and to save up comfortably and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm taking uh, an education in uh, children's psychology. Oh, cool! Um, in January, hopefully, and then I'm going to be like. A, kindergarten teacher for a couple of years you know um i'm gonna say this uh, Sab sabina i'm sorry that you're struggling but also on that on the other hand um it does it is kind of comforting to hear that um people are economically fucked in denmark too because i think a lot of americans think it's just <laughs> us no yeah no i think it's everybody um the entirety of Scandinavia is really, except Norway, they're doing great. Because um, don't people but, always, and I, by the way, I'm talking about things that I just have no idea about, and I just, I'm like, 
making this all up and I have no idea what I'm talking about. But I feel like people always like point to Scandinavia as like, oh, this is how we should do things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In in a lot of ways, we do it. I would never. I always think about living like somewhere that's really, really warm. Um, because these days we have uh, minus five degrees Celsius, which is uh, pretty fucking cold and sweat. I'd love to go somewhere warm, but Scandinavia is just it's really, really good. It's it, it's messy and expensive, but the healthcare and the uh, the mental health care is it's nice, and it doesn't it doesn't put debts on the children if you get. Do you guys get Do you guys get free health care in Denmark? Yes, uh, or oh, we paid cool. over the uh, our taxes. Of course, we have the, those abnormally high taxes. So, but um, but yeah, free health care and free uh, mental health care. I feel like they give you guys Not free popsicles too. Though. Do they give you free popsicles? When we go to the doctor? Just like in general, just if you just get a yearly popsicle if you live in Denmark. Mm. No, but every fourth year is when we have like our what's it called? The change of state, the elections. Um people are always standing like around the stations and they're giving out free bread. And sometimes popsicles. What's your name again? Sabina? Yeah, Sabina. Sabina. Um, well, Sabina, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, you sound like you're doing pretty good. When you said you had a I, – I hope this isn't diminishing, but when you said you had a rough couple of years, I was expecting far worse. You sound like you're doing okay. I am, but I'm, I'm doing okay, but I've uh, – I'm doing a lot of therapy at the moment for a lot of other couple stuff. Um, and that's really working for me, but I'm trying to stay positive, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and just I've spent the last six months being absolutely miserable. Um, I had a terrible dead-end job at that time that really knocked me off my feet after everything. Um, but I'm out of it, and on to therapy and that's good um has there, it's not have to you, say that but I'm, have I'm you sorry? have you have you learned and has, has therapy been helpful for you oh yeah absolutely um i've done uh, psychotherapy uh, with metacognitive treatment i think it's called in english is that what they is that what they shock of, you no, no. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, it's it's learning to uh, to look at your own thoughts and feeling as neutral and not not as a part of yourself. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that stuff. Like the whole the whole uh, you are not your thoughts idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, I don't yeah. know, man. Because if you're not like. That's an interesting thing to think about, because if you're not your thoughts, then what are you? Yeah, that's, uh, I asked about that as well, and <laughs> my, uh, my therapist, she said that's the eternal question that they always ask themselves, and we should ask ourselves, but we are not our thoughts. We are not our thoughts. We are a talking gecko and a Swedish hat maker. Yeah. Um, Sabina, is there anything else you want to say to the people of the computer before we go? Um, I hope that um, everybody stands up for themselves um, and hangs in there because I know everybody is struggling in these times. Um. But I think it's going to be better, and hopefully someday the uh, the house market crashes. Have a good rest of the night. You too. Thank you. Bye, Sabina. All right, you know what I'm realizing is that uh, we actually, on the, I think on the most recent podcast, we also had a, a, a Danish caller 
And I also talked a lot about Danish 7-Eleven. For real, if you have you if you've ever if you ever go to 7-Eleven, you got to get the honey chicken at the um at the Danish 7-Eleven. It's really good. It's better if you go on like a Yelp or whatever or TripAdvisor or whatever the fuck, it'll tell you all these fancy restaurants. Don't do that. Go to 7-Eleven and get the honey chicken. It's really good. Call from Jared. Hello. Hello. Oh my god, am I actually with you? Yeah, what's your name, dog? Oh, hey. Uh my name's Jared. Jarrett. What's yeah, happening, Jarrett? I just Jarrett? came what's up going on? Like I need it. Uh, not much. I woke up to your stream and was dedicated to get on to it. And now here we are, Jared. Jarrett. Yes, man. Hell yeah. What's up, man? What's you? Well, uh, I, I feel like, you know, if you're dedicated to getting on the stream, I feel like there was something you wanted to talk about. It's okay if not. Yeah. A while ago, it was, like, the biggest thing I wanted to do because I was, like, really depressed. And I just needed, like, somebody random and anonymous to talk to. Uh -huh. And then I saw your stream, and then I was just like, oh, this is perfect. And so I set aside some time because I'm, like, always busy now, and I hate it, um, to try and talk to you. And, and well, now here I am. Um, but now life is kind of okay. It's a little bit better, but it's still ambiguous and i don't know what to do <laughs> what do you mean by ambiguous uh well i have all these things going for me um but i don't know i feel like i'm getting nowhere in life and mm. i feel like i'm wasting a lot of opportunity and i feel really bad about it and i just i don't know i'm in college i have jobs i work with my parents um but I'm going nowhere. <laughs> what opportunity do you have that you feel as though you are wasting? Uh, the fact that uh, I go to college. I know that's not, I know that's like something a lot of people in America do, but like a lot of people also don't get the chance to go to college. Um, I don't know. I just, I went into, I went to school or I went to high school just because it was the only thing to do. And then I went to college just because it was the only thing to do. My parents were just, you know, telling me like it's the best thing for you. So I did it without thinking about what was after that or what else I could do. Cause I don't know like what I want to do with my life. I like doing small niche hobbies. I like like, like blacksmithing and rock climbing, not papers. And, and essays and, and projects. Well, we are on the cusp of World War III. Um, that is cool, yeah. Which, yeah. which will be fought with guns, but famously World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. So if you get in early on the blacksmithing in about 30 years, you might uh, be the most in-demand skillsman in the United States. Then I can't wait for World War Four. <laughs> You're going to make a lot of money off of World War Four. Um, how old are you? I'm 20. Okay. Why do you, what do you mean? You, why, uh, well, I still, after everything you've told me, don't understand why you feel guilty or like you're wasting something. What do you feel like you're wasting? Uh, Just life? Well, everything that I do, I well, at least recently. No, that's not true because my whole life I feel like I haven't really achieved anything other than just kind of getting by and... Like what I, the I, fuck are yeah. you supposed to have achieved by now? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I look at all my friends around me, and they've achieved stuff. Like, some of them are already. Oh, they have soccer trophies. <laughs> no. Like, which of your hold on, my, hold on, hold on, hold on? Which of your friends are millionaires? Uh, I have this one friend. Okay, I don't want to get too specific, but um, I you, I went to a private school with a bunch okay. of like richie prissy kids and they're pretty nice but one of them's already like he invested in uh like crypto and stuff like that and now he's a millionaire and he's like it's oh man and then another person like they're already ahead on their college degree and they're already like they already graduated co uh, college and they're on to their master's or their phd well, i think be, be happy for him look 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 some people them, but some like, hold on some people got a lot of money from their parents 
put it into cryptocurrency, and it made them a lot of money, and that's what happened to them. That's their life. Who gives a shit? It doesn't affect you at all. Yeah, uh, that's true. I guess. Well, and by the way, I that's not really. I mean, I don't really know what if that's. I mean, I'm not gonna knock it. I mean, it's you know they have a lot of money. <laughs> that's always it's cool. Uh, having a lot of money is is cool. But like, what? what well, they didn't they didn't really do anything. That's true. What do you want to do? What do you want to? What do you want to do? What do you like actually? Because I mean, you're right now. You're just getting mad at yourself because you don't have ten Ethereum. I guess. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. That's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Is just, I have no clue. I've never known what to what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, I've always just enjoyed the the hobbies that I do. And what I, are the, I all right. What are the hobbies that you do aside from just blacksmithing? I like rock climbing, skateboarding, uh, uh, scuba diving. Um, what else? I play music. I love playing the music, like piano whenever I'm like frustrated. Bro, it sounds um, like you do a lot of things. I do a lot. I have. A, I do martial arts and stuff too. It's just, I don't know, man. I can't make a career out of any of this stuff. Brother, you're a renaissance man. You know, I. Uh, so, uh, so it's what? It's about like making money. Yeah, it's mainly, I just want to be successful, not about making money, but just enough to, like, live comfortably um, and to support a family, because I do want a family one day. Yeah, you know, this is all interesting, because um, I, I, you know, well, what does successful look like to you? What my parents are like right now is actually, like, the best example. Awesome. Um, they, uh, my dad... He was kind of in the same boat as me, and then he found my mom, and then they were just on their own for their entire, like, 30s. And my mom became a vet, or she was a vet, and then that's when they met, and then they kind of just started building a life off of that. And then over time, they started upgrading and upgrading. Like, they were in a little apartment when I was born, and then they moved on to, like, buying a house during the uh, housing crisis of 2008. But, um, so, are you saying that, bought like by having a big house is successful for you? No, we're not in a big house. It's just like a mediocre house. I'm just saying, like, if I could own my own place, right. live enough, uh, make enough to like buy to buy groceries for the week, and to also okay. like go on vacation. Give me a number. A give me a number. What's the number? What's an amount of money that Ooh. you want to make? Ooh, that I want to make at least yeah. a million a year. You want to, <laughs> dude? Fuck you! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! You're like, you said, you said, well, it's funny because you said I want to, I just want to have enough to support a family, and because you went yeah. from, uh, you dude, you just went from I want to have enough to support a family and get groceries and blah blah blah, and then you were like, I want to make a million dollars a year, which hey, yeah, in seventy years funny. that might be the number to support a family and and get groceries, but it's not right now. Oh shit! Then maybe like five k, that five hundred k. Sorry. You want to make five hundred thousand dollars a year? It, yeah, I would say at least that then, because that between five hundred k and a mil is like, is like the average, I guess, or not like the average for everybody in America, but just like, dude, hold on, five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All right, I don't know what school you went to, but it has brainwashed you. Five hundred thousand dollars is not the average salary in America. I know, no, I know, I know. <laughs> I meant, <laughs> I meant, I meant that like, um, like in av- like on in general, I guess it's just what I want, what I want. I, that's my success. In my, it, it, you okay, so want that's, to be, your you remember, that's, 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 that's your success. That's 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 your success. By the way, another. Oh, by the yeah. way, hold on. I'm not. By the way, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make a lot of money. I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with that. If that's if that's your prerogative in life. Um, okay, so you want to make five hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, at, at least I would say, because that's that's what okay. I mean by live comfortably. Because then you can like uh, get the things you want and still have enough to pay the bills and all that kind of stuff. Okay, you know, I'm and- gonna. By the, all right, I'm gonna tell you a few things. One is that, I money is like a tool, you know. If yeah. you just and if you just start randomly spouting off like. Oh, I want to make five hundred thousand dollars because that's how much it costs to live comfortably. You're you you need to. I'm gonna get practical with you on this. You need to do this, and you need to reverse your thinking on this, okay? Mm-hmm. Because you actually need to start from the other end, because you're starting with a number 
and then working backwards with a life, mm -hmm. right? So why don't you yeah. start with a life and then come up with a number from there? Or do you know what I'm saying to you right now? So I go can't. ahead and go. I'm gonna. This is real like shit. So you go. Okay, I want to be able to um, do this and do this and have this and then this, mm -hmm. and then you get your number from there because you might. What you might actually find out is that um, if your goal is to support a family and have groceries, it actually doesn't cost five hundred thousand huh. dollars. I guess so. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? No, I do. I do. It's just okay. like you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that's the, the so, normal way to look at it then. I don't know. I just hyper inflated throughout my, like, my thinking throughout the, my life, I guess. Yeah, because you're crazy and you grew up around a bunch of <laughs> crazy people um, who all have a million dollars in, in, in Dogecoin or whatever. But, um, uh, I mean, dude, like, what also, I mean, you're also 20, man. Like, what, yeah. who cares about any of this stuff? Go, go be poor. I'm a, I'm a junior in college, too, and I've, I've failed at least three classes. And Okay. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to graduate on time and all that all kind right. of, like, stress. Uh, my parents are kind of like the, uh, they're not, like, strict. But they're also they also like want me to do well, so they stay on top of me quite a bit. Um, and if I ever like get like a C or a D, then they start to like really pounce on me. So when I failed three courses in a year, they were not happy with me. So okay. And then what do you now? I'm just kind of floating, in, floating. Bro, in life. bro, what's your name again? <laughs> Jarrett. Jarrett. Jarrett, yeah. um, Jarrett, you're crazy, man. I, what? <laughs> Hold on, Jarrett, you're no, you're it's you're the good kind of crazy. Um, okay. All right, let's get. Can we? Can we? I'm just trying to calm down for a second. Um, <laughs> my bad. What are you? What are you studying in school? Um, currently. I, my major is biochemistry, but I want to change it over to chemistry because I I don't know I just it, chemistry just comes easier to me than okay. biology. Jarrett, do you like chemistry? A bit, yeah. It's exciting enough to me to be like, oh, I could I could stare at this for hours. Okay, it's a it's good enough that you could do it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Okay. That's that's where I that's where I come that's where like my inner conscious comes in and it's just like, well, hold on there, pal. And I'm like, I'm very scared to commit to it because I like doing other things too. Okay. Um, cause I just, cause um, you know, also I don't think there's anything wrong with like, I mean, Jared, you're a Renaissance man. You listed off like six different hobbies. Um, yeah. And I don't yeah, think there's anything too. wrong at all with having some shitty J day job and then on the side doing your hobbies and living your life. I guess so. But I still, I'm still, um, I just, I, the reason I said you're crazy is be, is for a lot of reasons, is because you are like, oh, I'm 20 and I haven't accomplished anything yet and I'm going to beat myself up about it and freak out about it because I don't have a million dollars in cryptocurrency like my friend does. Um, yeah. And also, you know, I, I, I need to make five hundred thousand dollars to buy groceries you know no, you're, yeah uh, I guess, you you, I guess you, need, you gotta yeah. you gotta come you gotta come back down to earth my friend you'll have a good time <laughs> it's, here yeah it's, it's more than just the fact i don't know i'm just i'm kind of scared to talk about a lot of this stuff but i don't really care at this point what do you mean why like, what do you hold on what do you why are you scared to talk about this stuff no because like that's just like the the start that's where it starts i just think i'm thinking i'm a failure in life because like i crashed my car a lot and I had to pay it all off, so I lost all my money. Uh -huh. And then I, I failed college. I barely made it out of high school. Um, well, that's not completely true, but like, yeah. And then I said, like, I didn't really achieve anything. I don't have anything out there with my name on it, um, other than like maybe my Instagram. <laughs> Bro, you're bla and you're then, scuba diving and blacksmithing. You're not a failure. Those are hobbies, though. Those aren't like. like Why do you? Achieving. But I just, I, uh, Jarrett, listen. Okay. I'm not taking back what I said about you being crazy. You're crazy, but you're not okay. a failure. 
Okay, you're not okay. A, you're not a failure. You're you're too you're too young to write yourself off as a failure because you got into a car accident and because you are skip it, you, you know, you fucked up some classes. You just stop doing that. Don't write don't write yourself off as a failure. Okay, just stop doing okay. that today. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yes, Mr. Gecko. Okay. Um Yeah. Yeah. It just it gets to me. You're not But I understand. You're not <laughs> You're not a failure because you, you know, fucked up a little bit here and there as in in your at the age of 20. And I mean, you, <laughs> let me ask you a couple questions. Did you kill sure. anyone in this car accident? <laughs> No, 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 no. Did you get? Did you get uh, three, f- five times above the uh, uh, the the alcohol limit for driving <laughs> and and murder a, a six year old girl? Lord God, no. Uh, all right, the, the, listen. The, these these are my standards for for failure. All right. Did you uh-huh. um, did you get somebody pregnant? No, God. I okay. kind of wish I did, though, but no. <laughs> Dude, you're crazy. All right. <laughs> I, um, want, I want, like, because that would mean I would have a relationship with someone, like a really strong relationship No, you with don't. Somebody. No, you don't. Dude, okay, here's no, no, the thing. Just, no, because here's me. the thing. I want, you to, I want you to know something. I want you to know something. Okay, all right. You, you having no money <laughs> and being 20 is fine. Uh-huh. You having no money and being twenty and having a kid is not fine. But you have, but <laughs> you having no money mm-hmm. right now, and it's just you, and you're not responsible for anyone else. Yeah, you're fine. You're not a failure. You're fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Just you're fine. Just can you trust me that you're fine. All right. Um. Well, I yeah. don't even know what I, I was I, saying to you. But uh, look, you didn't fucking kill it. Like, just you've given me no reason as to why you're a failure who should go die in the woods, and that's what I'm sensing <laughs> is how you feel about yourself. And I don't think yeah. you should you should feel that way anymore. Aw. Uh, okay. Well, thank you. I just I don't know. It's been I don't know. Maybe it's been getting in my own head. I don't know. It's just. It's been rough for me, at least, lately. And that's why I wanted to talk to you. Uh, how, how do you feel about the conversation that we've had so far? I guess better. Kind of made me snap back to reality. Also, chat really helped with, like, by them flaming on me. <laughs> made me realize. I know, I know, I haven't looked at the chat. I don't know if they're, I don't really care whether or not they're flaming on you, but, um. <laughs> they can flame, it's alright. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. Jared, why don't you go? Make, why don't you go? You know what? You you know what I think you need to do. What? I think you're too in your head, and you gotta go make a sword. Dude, you're right. Why don't you go make a sword, dude? I. That is a good idea. Just spend some time making a sword. It's cold outside, though. Why do like you have to go outside to make a sword? Because, because that's where the forge is. Go, buddy, go make a fucking... Go be a blacksmith. Go be Skyrim. Go make a fucking sword in the cold. Do it. <laughs> it that sounds awesome. I want to make a sword in the cold. I guess so. In the snow? I, that sounds sick, I, dude. I'll save it for break because I have finals and shit coming up that I need to study for it. Okay, we'll go do that, and um, just, I don't know, Jared, don't beat yourself up so much because you don't have a million dollars. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gecko. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, one more thing. I've yeah. been wanting to say this on such a big platform for so long. Uh-huh. Um, learn to trim your animal's toenails. Please, for the love of God, do that. Cool. I'm very glad that you uh, chimed in with maybe the most random thing you possibly could have said <laughs> at the end of this call. Um, thank you for that. Uh, You're welcome. Take care, Jared. Good luck. You too, Gecko. I want a mil. I want a million dollars. That'd be sick. But you know what? 
we can't all have we can't all have a million dollars in cryptocurrency. And if we did, it would be worthless. That's what that's what that's what maybe the government should just give us all a million dollars and we'd all be happy. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run for president and, all, and my platform is that I'm going to give. Didn't Kanye West say that once? Didn't he say that we should give every baby a million dollars? He was right about that. We should give every baby a million dollars. Thank you.